Hey guys, in this video we're going to be going over organism level systems, parts of your biology GCSE for OCR gateway. Now to go with this video, there are thousands of multiple choice questions waiting for you on my website and a free vision guide where you can check stuff off as we go along. The nervous system is incredibly complex and is overlaid on our spinal and muscular system. It consists of the brain, spinal cord, which together are going to make the central nervous system, or CNS, and all the neurons, the receptors and effectors. When you pick up stimuli, that signal needs to travel from wherever you picked up, so your fingers, all the way up to your nervous system, your central nervous system. Sometimes just stopping at your spinal cord and then coming straight back again. That is going to be a reflex. This is going to happen when you touch something hot, so you move your hand away without even thinking about it. Other times something is going to happen, the signal will go up to your brain, you'll think about it and then you'll decide to move. The nerve cells involved in this are very long, so this cell body here is incredibly long and this can send a fast electrical signal. However, when we come to transfer the signal from one um, nerve cell to another nerve cell, things slow down a bit because they have to cross a synapse. This is going to be a slow chemical signal. As the chemical has to be released, diffuse across the channel and then be picked up and then initiate another electrical signal. Here we have our beautiful picture of the eye. The sclera, which is the white bit. The retina, which is where the image is focused. The optic nerve, which sends message to brain. The ciliary muscles, which change the shape of the lens. Uh, the cornea, which is a protective covering. Pupil, let's light in. The lens is responsible for focus. And the suspensory ligaments hold the lens in place. If you are short-sighted, you can't see distant objects and if you're long sighted you can't see close objects. In an eye that can see correctly the lens will take the light and will focus the image on the retina. Whereas someone that is short-sighted, the image focuses before the retina and someone that is long-sighted, the image focuses behind the retina. To correct short-sightedness, we need a diverging lens. And to correct long-sightedness, we need a converging lens. The brain is the control centre of the body, it makes sure everything functions properly and tells various different parts what to do. We have the cerebral cortex, the cerebellum and the medulla. The brain is an incredibly complicated thing to study because um, for it to be functioning properly it needs to be inside a living person. Doctors can work on mapping various different things by using... MRI scanning and CT scanning, um, giving the person different stimuli to see which parts of the brain light up. 
Here we have the male and female um, endocrine system, the pituitary gland. is in the brain, thyroid, is in the neck, the adrenal glands run the kidneys, pancreas is hiding behind the stomach, ovaries are kind of like hip level and testes have a lead penis. The testes produce testosterone, which has the effect of um, growing muscles, making the balls and penis drop and grow larger, um, increasing the rate of hair growth. Oestrogen is produced in the ovaries that are responsible for the maturation of eggs and the menstrual cycle. The pancreas produces insulin, which is important for regulating blood glucose levels. The adrenal glands produce adrenaline, which is important for our fight or flight response. The thyroid produces thyroxine, which is important in regulating our metabolism. The pituitary gland is very busy. Among other things, it produces follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH. One of the reasons periods feel so rubbish is because your hormones are literally all over the place. Starting with follicle-stimulating hormone, it rises, peaks, and its job is to make the small egg grow up to a larger egg and then be released. Luteinizing hormone is only active for a very, very short period. Its job is to release the egg. Oestrogen builds up until it stimulates luteinizing hormone. Progesterone builds up slowly as it builds up the lining of the uterus. And if there is no um, egg, uh, if there is no embryo implanted in it, that will de decrease and the lining of the uterus will break down. There are a number of different methods of contraception, some hormonal, some non-hormonal, that will stop you getting pregnant. But not all of these will protect against sexually transmitted diseases, so it's always very, very important that you wear a condom. This is a barrier method of contraception. This will stop the sperm getting um, the woman pregnant and it will also stop the nastiest that are being transmitted from her to him or from him to her. The pill and the coil, IUD, into uterine device are hormonal methods of stopping getting pregnant. They are going to stop the egg being released or the egg being implanted. The diaphragm is a barrier method because it will stop sperm entering the vagina but the um, semen will still be transferred into the um, vaginal entrance so that you can still get sexually transmitted diseases this way. If you're sure that you don't want to have children, you can like, go to be sterilised, you can have a vasectomy, you can have your tubes tied, which will mean that no sperm will get from the testes out to the penis, or for the woman, no egg will be released. Around one in six people will find themselves in the unfortunate position where they can't have children naturally. About half this is due to male-related reasons and half this is due to female-related reasons. As you can see, I am one of those people. And last year, um, 2016, we did IVF. And this is my massive bump. So the obvious advantages for um, IVF are you get a baby out of it, um, and if you've been in a situation where you can't have something that you really, really want, you know it's very, very sad and affects your mental health quite a lot. So having a baby is going to be good for people that want to have a baby, their mental health. However, the disadvantages are you have to take a large, large number of drugs for a very, very long period of time. Um, these have very nasty side effects. Um, as well as the daily injections, which leave you horribly bruised. Um, you, um, there are long-term consequences for these. because um, taking these IVF drugs increases your chance of various different types of cancer. It is very... It's very, very expensive. Um, I had to have it twice. Um, that's twice as expensive. 
doesn't always work. Um, there is about a 40% success rate with IVF, with each round of IVF costing a, a minimum £5,000 um, with a 40% success rate. Here are all the large number of drugs that I have to take day by day. Um, it's a very costly, time-consuming, painful process. Phototrophism means something is going to grow towards the light. Geotrophism or gravitrophism means something is going to grow towards gravity. Meaning your roots are always going to go downwards and your shoots are always going to go upwards. Gibberellins are important for growth. Um, ethene is important for ripening plants and auxins are important for growth and they're going to do growth in the right direction. Homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. And to keep your body functioning properly, we need to control our blood glucose levels our water levels and our temperature. The brain is the control centre. And that's going to be sending signals um, to various parts of the body. For example, to the pancreas, which is responsible for producing insulin. Um, effectors muscles um, are going to do things like moving, for example, shivering. And then glands are going to be responsible for the production of other hormones. Body temperature is going to be regulated by the Thermoregulatory, thermoregulatory centre in the brain. If you are too cold, the hairs on your body will stand up. This is to trap a layer of air, you're going to stop sweating, vasoconstriction will start, so your blood vessels will constrict so that they're further away from the skin, less blood is going to to flow close to the surface of the skin so less heat is going to be lost from it and your muscles are going to start to shiver and movement is going to produce energy. If you are too hot your hairs are going to lie flat so they're not trapping any air you're going to start sweating and the water is going to evaporate leading to heat and energy loss. And your blood vessels are going to undergo vasodilation, meaning they are going to get wider so that blood can flow closer to the surface of the skin so that heat can be lost. Control of blood glucose is very complicated. After a meal has been eaten, blood glucose levels start to rise. This is picked up by the pancreas. The pancreas produces insulin, which is sent out into the blood. 
the insulin in the bloodstream is going to cause uh, body cells to start to remove glucose from the blood. Liver and muscle cells can take the glucose and convert it into glycogen and store it. Removing glucose from the blood will cause blood glucose levels to fall. If blood glucose levels get too low, this is also picked up by the pancreas. The pancreas will start to produce glucagon. The glucose that has previously been stored in muscle and liver cells starts to return to the blood. The most complicated part of this is getting all the names right. The stored form of glucose is glycogen. Glucagon will convert that into glucose. And this returning to the glucose will cause blood glucose levels to rise again. There are two different types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreas doesn't work properly. So it doesn't produce the right amount of insulin. In type 2 diabetes, cells start to become insensitive to insulin. Symptoms for both are going to be a loss of weight. Um, an increased need to wee. Being very thirsty. Blurry vision. Fatigue. So being very sleepy and hunger. Treatment for type 1 diabetes is going to involve insulin injections. Type 2 diabetes it's going to be controlling diet. Exercise. The kidneys have three functions. They remove urea, they control the iron content, and they control the water content of the blood. There are three ways we can lose um, water from our body. In urine, in sweat, and when we breathe out. It's important to control the level of water in the body because there is, there's too much water, it's too much water taken up by cells by osmosis then they might pop or if there's not enough water then the enzymes, the functions, the reactions won't be able to take place. There are three steps the way that the kidneys function, ultrafiltration, reabsorption and then the release. Blood enters the kidneys under high pressure and water, ions, urea and sugar are going to be squeezed out into the capsule, which is at the start of the nephron. As this all flows along the nephron, useful things are reabsorbed. All of the sugar is going to be reabsorbed via active transport. Some ions, the amount of ions that we need, the type of ions that we need, are going to be reabsorbed by active transports. And enough water that we need is going to be reabsorbed. The hormone that controls how much water is going to be absorbed is ADH, which is antidiuretic hormone. And then anything that isn't reabsorbed is going to come out as we. If kidneys aren't working properly, a person can undergo kidney dialysis. The dialysis machine will take over the function of the kidneys. But it is very time consuming, it takes about four hours and has to be done three times a week. So this has a huge impact on someone's life and is not a lot of fun. An alternative to dialysis could be a kidney transplant. But these come with very long waiting lists and there is always the risk of rejection. Ouch!
This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.